Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video I'll be talking about GPS and how to use it to create a GPS disciplined NTP server for our local computers. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 like this one and a recently bought USB dongle, GPS USB dongle to receive satellite signals for this solution. Before we start, let me remind you, you can subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get notifications about all the videos I'll be publishing. Now, let's do it! The big question we are always asking today is, what time is it? We need precise time for our everyday tasks, appointments, jobs, among other things. Just like we need, also machines do. Our personal computers and servers, among other gadgets and appliances, need precise time. To solve that problem, now we can rely on satellite constellations like Galileo, GPS, GLONASS or Beidou to report precise timestamps. Our economy depends on it. Telecom networks need it, our entire industry or our financial market. To make this experiment, I have ordered a GPS receiver, a USB receiver module from AliExpress. Let me show you that. As you can see, this small receiver has several satellite constellations included, four of them. It is based on uh, Ublocks M8030 KT uh, chipset, which uh, has a fairly uh, nice sensitivity, minus 160 dpm, and connects directly to your USB port on your computer. So, this fits our Raspberry Pi hardware, so we can make all the experiments. With that, I will show you how to install all the solution on the Raspberry Pi 4 so you can provide precise time to our entire network and all the gadgets that might be using our Wi-Fi network. So the bill of materials for this experiment is a Raspberry Pi 4 board with 4 gigabytes of RAM. This is a server, so I would say that only one gigabyte of RAM is enough. One power supply for the board one GNSS USB receiver with the U-Blocks UBXM8030KT chipset, one micro SD card with 8 gigabytes or more, and the micro HDMI cable to get the video signal, and finally the USB keyboard to interact with our board. So first let me show you how I did all the hardware assembly. These are the ports available on our Raspberry Pi 4 and this is the micro SD card previously uh, saved from the standard ISO image. Let me connect the USB dongle for the USB keyboard. Then I will connect the GPS uh, receiver. Remind that this is a GNSS with compatibility with four different constellations. I will connect it to another USB port, leaving it that way for now because later I will put the antenna outside. Now the HDMI cable, let me connect to the port and finally the power supply connector USB-C connector so I can power up my board. The system is already booting. I have used Raspberry Pi OS in this case so let me show you the board and the antenna 
both outside outdoors okay so we can have a very nice signal from the satellites and that's how I left my boards during the entire experiment after you finish everything and you need to make it available permanently I would suggest that you create your own enclosure for outdoor usage so now I am already showing you my Raspberry Pi OS I will install the necessary packages apt install GPS D okay this is the GPS daemon so we can take care of the signals being received from the module from the USB dongle it's quite fast let's wait a little bit should be done in a second okay now we need also to install another package apt install GPS D minus clients so we can make our first tests on the signals and make sure the serial port and everything is working properly okay we are also done now let's go to slash etc slash default folder and edit the first parameters I will edit GPSD file and put all the necessary parameters on my file slash dev slash tty acm0 this is the name of the device that appears on my system I will show you later how to check it out by ID here I'll put some GPS daemon options minus n minus d capital one okay and finally here below let's head enabled directive equals yes so you can make sure it is activated and finally one last directive which is GPS underscore both equals 600 let's save the file and exit now I will start the daemon and check its status so we can make sure that after this configuration everything is working properly okay nice so let's move on I will show you now how to find out your device by serial as you can see in slash the dev slash serial I have my device correctly configured and at the end of the line you see the name of the device tty acm0 that's why I have chosen that path to my device now let me stop the daemon because we need to manage the GPS receiver uh, manually this tool called GPS mon with the parameter slash dev slash tty acm0 will give us access to the information provided by the GPS receiver as you can see we are already looking at some data below you see raw data being received here you see the number of channels being collected from the satellites okay we see the azimuth of each satellite and the elevation and also the signal noise ratio so we can have an idea of how strong each signal is for for example this satellite which has only five degrees of elevation the signal noise ratio is very low so we might not have a very good information from that satellite okay but remember that we only need time and at this point we are having a very nice position information with 3d all these uh, names are types of packets being received from the GPS module that uh, can give us altitudes 
the latitude, longitude, the time and other technical data that might be important for uh, some uh, applications. For us, let me remind you that we only need time from this module and here you can see that we have precise time being received. So this is what we need to inject in our NTP server so we can provide that information to all the computers or other servers in our local network. We have also another tool called CGPS that provides the very same information. This is what I'm getting from my module, okay? All the information from the satellites I receive. This uh, satellite uh, elevation and azimuth might change during the day, but as soon as you install all this setup, you will not be looking at this information. You might only need to make sure that you are really getting time information from these uh, satellites we see from our receiver. Okay, so let's move on and start making our NTP configurations. Now I will install NTP package, apt install NTP. This is the daemon that we'll be using for this setup. And after we are done, we will make the necessary configurations so we can make GPS the first, the preferred way of getting precise data. Okay, the ntp.conf file located in slash etc will be configured now. I am already disabling the pool servers that uh, come uh, as a default and I will add our configuration for GPS usage. Let me put it here server 127.127.28.0 with meaning poll 3 for 8 seconds and max poll also 3. This means that I will be asking for uh, time information every 8 seconds and then let's tell NTP server that this IP is a, a reference ID of GPS type because we could use different time sources. Now let's restart the service systemctl restart NTP and after we do that Let's make sure everything is working properly. We see a kernel report with time error, which means that we are not using uh, precision uh, pulse, the PPS signal that can be used. For example, if you use an internal module with an auxiliary uh, general purpose IO to get that information. For us, it's not being used, so it might be giving us an error. Ignore it it doesn't matter. So now I am using NTP Q minus P to show you our information. We also see that an information is already being provided. Look at the offset of this information that is getting closer to zero. So it is improving because we start from an incorrect time information and we are getting there with small steps because each time we ask what time is it, the GPS will give us a correct time and we will be approaching its correct time by uh, giving small steps. It, it's part of the protocol that uh, we don't set our time all the way in only one step. As soon as the time is considered the best time source, you see the asterisk at the beginning of the line, uh, which represents the best time source that we currently have in our server. 
which is at this point SHM from a GPS source. SHM means shared memory because we have an internal socket uh, provided with a, a specific uh, memory address that can share information from GPS daemon and uh, NTP server. Okay, so this information that I am showing you here is real-time data and you can see this is a little bit in fast forward so you can have an idea how it is being changed by NTP. Now I have to configure my firewall so I can accept uh, NTP connections. Let me first add some rules because this experiment is being made through SSH connection, remote connection. Remind that my Raspberry Pi was outdoors during all the experiment. And after I accept port 2240CP, SSH connections, and port 123 for NTP, I have activated UFW, the firewall, IP tables, and enabled it for uh, automatic starts on boot. Now that I have solved my firewall properties, let me show you my wireless LAN IP address 192.168.1.151 and I will need that information so I can configure my client. As a client I'll use my Mac OS operating system and workstation operating system so I can show you how to configure it. I have made this TCP dump uh, command so I can filter only NTP from this source and this is my main uh, time configuration window on my properties window. I have disabled my automatic data and now I will put my NTP server's IP address so you can see network traffic being transferred. So if I make here a very quick experiment disabling, changing day, my date, saving it, when I put it in automatic you see that the date automatically changed to the correct one. I will do the same with my hour, I save, I put in automatic and it sets time automatically. So my Mac OS is setting time and date from my Raspberry Pi that is outdoors near my office getting satellite data with a precise GPS signal okay with time and date and with that information I am setting my personal computer's clock. So this would be the same for any other computer or server on our local network. Let me show you GPS information one last time so you can see that it keeps giving us uh, time. I have been doing this for hours to make sure all the information was correct by all time and as you can see I am setting now my time and date from this source. This is a very cheap solution that gives you precise time from GPS constellation and keeps you independent from other internet time sources from NTP. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe the channel so you can help supporting it. And press the bell button if you want to get notifications about all the videos I'll be publishing. Bye bye guys! Mm -hmm.